Hello and thank you for your interest in ITT engineered valves products. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the diaphragm changeout process for an ITT Envision style diaphragm valve. For purposes of the demonstration today, I'll be using a manual valve, but the actuated valve has very similar steps. Where they're different, I'll point them out during the video. From a nomenclature standpoint, a couple things before I begin. The manual version of the Envision valve, uh, first thing you probably notice is there's two hand wheels. The top hand wheel is the normal operation in service open close hand wheel. You use that as the valve is being used in service. The lower hand wheel, I'm going to call that the cover hand wheel, uh, that's the hand wheel that is used in the diaphragm changeout process primarily. That's what's going to open and close the valve and take it apart and put it back together. It is the same on the actuated version, um, but just for purposes of nomenclature, we're going to call this the cover hand wheel. So to begin your diaphragm changeout process, the first thing you want to look for is this locking pin that's on the Envision valve on the cover hand wheel. On three quarter inch and larger sizes, that locking pin is spring loaded. On smaller than three quarter inch, it's going to be an Allen head uh, screw in type of, of pin that is uh, secured with an Allen wrench um, due to the space constraints on the smaller valves. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull that spring-loaded pin into the release position. So you want to pull it out and give it a quarter turn um, so that it locks out into the locked out position. What that does is freeze up your hand wheel. Now you want to turn your cover hand wheel in a counterclockwise direction and what you're doing by doing that is loosening the connection between the body and the bonnet. So as I'm doing that, you can see that that, that bonnet starts to loosen. That hand wheel will come to a natural stop. You do not want to force that hand wheel beyond where it's supposed to stop. Everything is timed internally. So when I reach a point, it'll stop turning on its own. Gently stop. At that point, you're able to rot slightly rotate that bonnet and it'll come right off of the body. So the body has mushroom head studs on it. The bonnet marries to those studs. When everything is loose like it's supposed to be, it will come off very naturally and there's no forcing necessary. So that's step one. You've got your bonnet off. Now your diaphragm is exposed. What you want to do at this point is you want to get that diaphragm away from the bonnet flange. So in a manual version, it's simple. You just turn your on off open closed hand wheel in a clockwise position, essentially closing the valve, lowering that spindle, and now your diaphragm is loose and ready to be taken off. So this diaphragm on an Envision style valve is a quarter turn style diaphragm. So in its normal position, it's like this. You just turn it a quarter turn and it removes right from the, from the uh, bonnet. So in the actuated version, what you're going to have to do, um, if it's failed closed, you're great. It'll be in that closed position anyway. But you're going to have to use some air on the actuated version to get the actuator off of the body to separate those two, to relieve that, that tension between them, the pressure between them. You may have to use air intermittently to get to the different positions I'm going to talk about, but just know that you're probably going to want to have supply air or some type of local air to that actuator to be able to do the change out that I'm describing. So at this point, we've got our diaphragm removed. We take our old diaphragm and we, we dispose of it. We grab our new diaphragm. And at this point, I'm just gonna start doing the steps in reverse. So what I have is the, the new diaphragm. I'm gonna drop it on. There's a, there's a clipped head stud on there that, that's gonna marry to that slot on the compressor. I wanna drop it in there, give it a quarter turn. And what I wanna do is line up the tab of my diaphragm with this cutout tab in the bonnet. So once that's married up, this valve is in the, again in the closed position, I want to try to bring it down and firm it up into a neutral position against my bonnet so that the tabs again line up with those cutouts. That is ensuring yourself proper position to that diaphragm. If it's out of position, you won't be able to get everything back together. So it's kind of pokey oaked in that regard. It's a, it's a foolproof way of doing it. As long as you have those diaphragm tabs lined up, you're good to go. So I've, I've brought it back to, to a neutral position. Now I have my body, and again, I'm just going in reverse. I'm gonna drop my bonnet on there, 
turn it, you'll hear it click. At this point, I want to release my spring-loaded locking pin so that now when I turn my cover handwheel clockwise, you're going to hear it clicking. That's what you want to hear. That's, a, that's an internal device that keeps it from backing off as you're tightening everything back up. So you'll hear that clicking. A little pro tip here. You may want to, as you're doing that on the manual valve, you're going to probably want to walk up your open closed hand wheel because um, it wants to ride along down with that cover hand wheel. But that cover hand wheel will tighten and you'll hear it clicking. When it reaches its set point, uh, everything's timed internally again. That, that pin will drop into place. So if you watch that pin, it just dropped right into place. Your valve is now set. That is the diaphragm change out procedure for an ITT Envision valve. Thank you for viewing this. If you have any further questions or you're interested in any of our other videos, please visit us at engvalves.com. We have plenty of other good information there for you. Thank you.